Edward Albee's Three Tall Women, currently at the Stray Dog Theater, is a play in two acts about three tall women. They are and are not the same three tall women in each act, and they are each identified by the same letter in each act. A is a wealthy woman in her 90s, B is middle-aged, C is in her mid-20s. In Act 1, A is sinking into senility with difficulty controlling both her mind and her body. B is A's hired caretaker. It is strictly a job for her, but while she is not particularly fond of her charge, she does the job well. C represents A's law firm there to try to take care of matters A has neglected. She's regularly frustrated by A's long digressions into her memories, sometimes disjointed and contradictory. B defends A when C responds sarcastically and dismissively to A's rambling. In Act Two, the women are still A, B, and C, though A, who has a stroke at the end of Act One, appears to be lying in the luxurious bed in the splendid bedroom set designer Miles Bledsoe and lighting designer Tyler Dino have provided. But she is also up and about, there to join the others in contemplating their life, for they are obviously all the same woman at different ages, an identity subtly expressed in the colors of the costumes designer and director Gary Bell has given them. I'll be affirmed that much of Three Tall Women comes from his own life, but the play is not so much autobiographical, though a young man does enter to sit silently by his mother's bedside, as biographical, the biography of Albie's mother, with whom he had a very strange relationship. C is the woman as a beautiful youth employed as a model in an upscale dress shop, drinking in the admiration granted her, looking forward with hope to the life before her, unwilling to believe what A and B tell her of the life she will have. B, in her 50s, has married a wealthy man who's unfaithful and she has an estranged gay son. Her bitterness flavors much of her conversation. A still shares that bitterness, but she can be more meditative and philosophical as she remembers. As A, Jan Meyer shows great range, always with conviction, especially in the first act, when A's senility takes her to extremes. B has room for more expression of emotion in Act Two than Act One, and Donna M. Peroni plays each with clear control. I've always found Angela Bubesh to have an attractive and enjoyable presence on stage, and did again here, but I often wished for more depth, especially in Act One, in her playing of what admittedly is a somewhat shallow character. Stephen Henley plays the silent son. Though I enjoy Albie's language throughout Three Tall Women, I like Act Two better than Act One. Someday, I hope to figure out what the relationship between the two is. <laughs> well, I hope you have uh, another chance to see it so that that process can, can continue, because it, it's a great play and yeah. great to see it again. I suspect I will. <laughs> I hope you like the reviews on Two on the Isle. You can click here to see other reviews and to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to ring the notification bell to be reminded immediately after we post. Enjoy the reviews.